Now, one of the things Pride of Sport winners teach us is that sport is much more than about just winning and losing. Of course, sport can change lives, and our next winner is absolute proof of that. You're going to hear his story, but first, watch how he found out that he was a winner tonight. With a little help from our friend Robbie Savage. I'm here at Saturday Morning Savage, and our studio guests are just arriving. What they don't know is that one of them is in for a big surprise this morning. Bobby Kasanga is the founder of Hackney Wick FC. He turned his own life around after leaving prison and built an amazing community football club. He thinks he's here to watch the show, but we've got other ideas. Oh, love it. Oh! oh. oh. Savage. Bobby, come over here and oh. join us. So, well played, Bobby, but I've got a little surprise for you. Now you think you're here because your mate won tickets for the show. Well, I'm afraid he's not being entirely honest with you. <laughs> you're here because I wanted to meet you and give you a little bit of, of news. I'm delighted to tell you that you've won a Mirror Pride of Sport Award. <laughs> What you're doing for young people is so amazing. And Bobby, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, congratulations. Well done, Bobby! Well done, Bobby. Well done. Peckham's renowned for sort of gang violence. Growing up, everyone's always aware of the older guys, of older gangs, grooming the younger kids. But I guess as a youngster, you sort of look up to these guys because you see them as the sort of heroes of the local area. We used to go chocadero and do street robberies and then things just escalated from doing petty street robberies to doing um, armed robberies. My eureka moment was basically when I got caught for the second time, so maybe eight months after coming out of prison the first time, I was back in prison again for the same thing. My daughter had been born and I felt I messed up my early, the, the early stages of her life, but I need to make sure I'm there for the latter stages. I was released February uh, 24th, 2015. And a month later, that's when I started Hackney Wick Football Club. Well, Hackney Wick uh, engage probably about 250 players locally uh, in, in playing football every week. It's a community team, so everyone is welcome to come, independently of your qualities, your backgrounds, your race, it doesn't matter who you are, all right? As long as you want to play football, you're more than welcome to come and join us. It's a tool for all the young people around the area to progress in life and to really develop in, as a human being. So that's what Hackney Week is, it's a life skill for everyone, a life skill project. It's more than football, you have to actually give back to your community, so you have to actually volunteer. So the players who first start the football club community, they have to subscribe to volunteering once a month to local causes. Whether that was raising funds uh, or helping in the local marathon, handing out waters and drinks on the sideline. We used to go around helping, you know, elderly people that are really feeling kind of like lonely. The, the main one he has is the Wickers Charity, which is an anti-knife uh, organisation trying to educate young, young local youths the obvious reasons why not to get involved with knife crime. Especially with the spate of knife crime that's been going on recently, some of these kids are scared. They're scared to sort of walk the streets at night, they're scared to, to engage, but we give them a new social circle for them to hang around with, give them guidance, give them pathways into employment, give them pathways into hobbies. There's different avenues that we're helping them with. He's an inspiration to everyone and an example to everyone who wants to build something for the young people and for the young people themselves. They're keeping the boys and the girls off the streets and helping their parents come somewhere to enjoy instead of being at home or on the streets. Bobby, he's a good guy. Um, I've looked up to him since I met him. I knew he came come from a rough background and he just taught me not to get in them situations and I just aspire to be like him when I'm older. We know his past and he told us there's different paths and no matter where you come from, you can achieve something. He's got a megawatt smile and he deserves it. Please give it up for Bobby Kasanga. seeing, I mean, the Mirror's front page uh, yesterday or this morning was a young boy outside of school with a 10-inch blade. We're seeing a proliferation in knife crime in and around this country. How much of a difference do clubs like yours make to give those young men particularly an opportunity to do something with their lives and take up that spare time? I think, I mean, 
it's cliche, but honestly, give them something to do and they'll go out and do it. So we know it's not just football. If we're honest, most of the kids who come to our football team will probably never make it as footballers, and that's the honest truth. However, we know that football is a catchment that brings them there. So once they're there, what other pathways can we get them to, be it coding, graphic design, different parts of education, get them to employabilities, and that's what we try to do. The football's the catalyst, isn't it, for something much more important. Well, look, now I'm told, Bobby, and this struck me as particularly strange, seeing as you're a Hackney boy, you're actually a Blackburn fan, is that right? Yes, correct. <laughs> I can't imagine there's many in Hackney. How on earth did you end up supporting Blackburn? I'm originally from Peckham, actually, but yeah, that's probably the same, but... Um... <laughs> well, okay, sorry, I forgot. Peckham's a massive hotbed for Blackburn fans. Silly me. <laughs> um, it's actually quite a funny story. So um, I started liking football when I was maybe in year two, year three. My older brother supported Man United, and I wanted to support United. He said, no, you can't support Man United, and Blackburn were the team's second. So I started supporting Blackburn. <laughs> And then the following season, we actually won the Premier League, so, yeah. They won the Premier League. Who's laughing now, eh? Well, look, someone who couldn't be here tonight, but did want to send you a very special, special message, particularly. Uh, he is Blackburn's Premier League winning manager. Come over here, because I know you're going to want to watch this, Bobby. It's a message from Sir Kenny Dalglish. Hi, Bobby. Uh, it's Kenny Dalglish. I'm very sorry I can't be with you tonight to enjoy your celebrations, uh, but congratulations anyway. But even although I couldn't be there, I thought it would be very inappropriate if I didn't send you a message. Everyone who looks up to people needs a leader and taught a new Bobby today of being a fantastic leader. Let's hope your success continues. You can be hugely proud of what you achieved. So congratulations, have a great night, and I'm just sorry I couldn't be there. No, thank you. Have you ever seen him cry, boys? Woo! Tears of joy. That's your hero manager from Blackburn. If only knew that there was such a hot bed of Blackburn fans in Peckham. <laughs> All over London, isn't it? There's actually three of us at this company. <laughs> so look, from one football hero, we've got two to present your award. Please welcome Chelsea and England striker, current PFA Women's Player of the Year, Frank Kirby, and fellow East Londoner from West Ham, Spurs and England, striker Jermaine Defoe. <laughs> side and do something so constructive with your life um, is never easy. Um, you talk about mental strength, um, you know, going from, coming from the East End, I've got a big family and not, not, my, not my little cousins, you know, they've, they've been on similar passes as yourself and I try and talk to them and I understand how difficult it is. Um, but to see you doing so, like I said before, something so constructive in East London, uh, giving back to the community, um, I mean, it's, it's amazing and, you know, I can see that you're emotional and so you should be because what you've done is special, it's a special story. I'm so proud to be here and I'm humbled to be here. Think, Larry, and on from what Jermaine said, I think because you've had something negative, you've turned into such a positive, and you know, football wouldn't be anywhere with grassroots or just going for a kickabout with your friends. And I think what you're doing for the young people is changing their lives. You know, you say you don't want them to go down the same path, so you're trying to give them something else to focus on. I think that's really inspirational, and hopefully, you can continue to change many, many young kids' lives. Thank you, Brian. Would you like to hand on these awards? Our special recognition winner, Bobby Kasanga, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Jermaine. Thank you, Brian.